going on everybody? My name is Eddie and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to give you three reasons that you should not have an everything store on eBay. Now, before I get into this, I just want to say this. At the moment, I technically still have an everything store, but I'm moving away from it. Okay. And I'm only trying to sell in a couple categories, well, a few categories, but I don't want to sell everything no more. So I started off. I do not knock anyone that does have an everything store. I do not knock anyone if they choose to uh, start off with an everything store, if they still want to have an everything store. If you want to have an everything store, more power to you. This is not to say that this video is not made to, to, you know, knock those who have an everything store who are okay with an everything. If that's what you're okay with, that's fine. However, I did just want to point out three things that depending on what your goals are, you know, short term and long term, an everything store can present some, um, some, some real challenges, you know, some real challenges. And so number one, an everything store is really, really inefficient. Now, look, if you just doing eBay, uh, on the side for some extra money for fun or anything like that, this probably won't be that big of, of an issue, you know, but when you're selling everything, when you're going from clothes to a VCR to a toaster to, I don't know, some cups or some plates or a golf club or anything like that that becomes very inefficient in the fact that you have to start franken boxing things you gotta it takes a while look i've done it all i have shipped pretty much any and everything that there is a ship well all right i'll take that back actually i have shipped a lot of different types of items okay let's just put it that way i've shipped a lot of different types of items and there's nothing more frustrating man than going from some small item that all you, all you got to do is just throw it in the envelope, pat it or, or whatever. And then there's something else where you got to, you got to cut the box up. You got to tape it this way. You got to do that with it. You got to, if you have a lot of items to ship out, that becomes draining. Just mentally, it, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to your concentration. Heck, I, I, sometimes it was a challenge to my, to my sanity. Okay. So if you, if, if you want to scale your business, you're going to find it very difficult to do so because it's hard to have systems in place for all these different types of items you're going to be selling. All right. It's just one of the things you got to think about. If you want to have an everything store, that's fine, but it is going to have some challenges. And one of those challenges is going to be inefficiency and the time that it's going to take for you to switch from item to item and to ship and pack and, and all of that. And, and not only that, but putting those items away, storing those items, everything, you have to take those things into consideration. All right. Number two reason that you probably shouldn't have an uh, everything store comes from the end of what I just said. It's hard to scale. Okay. When you already have inefficient processes, you're going to have a very difficult time scaling your business. Now, if your goal is not to scale your business, this won't be really be an issue. Okay. However, if you want to scale your business, if this is something you want to do full time, then you really, really need to think about niching down, focusing on one or just a few categories and really, really getting to know those categories, setting up systems and putting those systems in place for you to be able to sell, you know, pack, ship and do all of that for those particular types of items and, and probably any item or category that might be closely related because you can do multiple categories and sell things that are similar. So you won't necessarily have to go from small items to large items to funny shaped items. You can keep all your items similar so that you only need certain types of packing materials, certain types of mailing materials and certain amount of space on your desk, certain amount of space for storage. So there's ways that you can do it. Uh, but if you just got to keep in mind, if your goal is to scale your business and everything store is going to present some real challenges uh, to that goal. And now that takes me to my third reason you shouldn't have an everything store. And that is Vero issues. Okay. One thing about eBay and you can look at the Vero list on eBay site and that's pretty much useless. Okay. 
Some of the companies on there really won't bother you. Some of them will. It just depends on how you list your items, what you put in your titles. And some of them are hawks, you know? You put, put your stuff up and they'll take you down. And then a lot of the companies, the majority I would like to say, probably aren't even on there, okay? Now, it is gonna be very difficult for you as a seller, especially if you're starting out. And this video is mostly for those of you guys and gals who are a little bit newer to reselling. Okay, if you're starting out, you don't want to be all over the place. You won't know. Yeah, you can go to the groups and they'll say this item gets Vero's and, need, and, need, and this company does it. You really, really need to get to know your niche and category. You really, I feel like I wish that was something I did in the beginning. Okay, I had a lot of issues, a lot of issues with eBay over, these, over the years, man. And it's because I was all over the place. So now you go from clothes. There's a lot of clothing brands that will give you Vero's. You need to learn that. What about electronics? What electronic companies might give you Vero's? Uh, baby items, right? What baby uh, companies might give you Vero's? Health and beauty. There's a lot of health and beauty companies that will Vero you, okay? So if you're jumping around, bouncing around from this item to that item, from this category to that category, now you open yourself up to all these different, um, I wouldn't say attacks, but liabilities, you know, because these are things that can threaten your account, your account. And especially if you're new, you can get your account shut down real easy if you start getting Vero's and counterfeit claims and this and that. Now, if you got a seasoned account, eBay will definitely give you leeway. But if you're new, if you're a new seller, you don't want to be getting dinged early in the game, okay? Now, if you focus in on one category or one niche, it is easier to get to learn what you can and can't do in that niche. And I'm going to tell you this from experience. eBay's policies are very, very nebulous, okay? They'll put something on there on that policy. For instance, my, I'm in the health and beauty mostly, mostly health and beauty, okay? Those policies, very open-ended. If you go to their pages, there's really, there's some, there's some specificity, but not a lot. I have been dinged for things that literally were not on that page, okay? And, and that's just health and beauty. They'll put links in there for you to go, but man, you talking about, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. And, and now I'm getting to the point where I'm getting really, really familiar and I know enough, but I can still get dinged because this is what eBay does. But now if I go from that in the health and beauty and learning what you can, their, their OTC policies and all of this crazy stuff that they got going on just in this one area. Now to have to go to another area and learn about those policies, learn about what you can and can't list, learn about who gives Vero's. That's a lot. That's a lot. You know, if look, if you just in this for the short term and whatever, take everything I'm saying and forget about it. But if you're in this for the long term, whether it be side hustle, whether it be just for fun or whether it be you're trying to start a business, especially, especially if you're looking at eBay to start a business, then you need to focus on one category, one niche. I feel like it's more beneficial to do that. OK, to get to know it, to be intimately knowledgeable of what it is that you're selling of what the what the obstacles are that you face the competition that you face and more importantly the things that can get you suspended and or banned from the platform as a new seller it's putting a lot on yourself to to try to sell everything and then get to know all these. That's why you, you, if you go through the groups, you hear these people complaining about, oh, I got ding for this and eBay's just that and this company, this and this company. And you can alleviate a lot of problems if you just focused in one area. Not only that, it makes you one, more efficient. It makes it two, easier to scale and three, easier to navigate through those things that could get you Vero or get you uh, a strike, counterfeit strike or whatever it is that some company want to hit you with or to keep you from violating the policy that eBay has. I highly suggest that whatever category you plan on selling in, you go on eBay's policy for that and you get to learn that and you check it at least once a month because they do add stuff to their policy, especially if you sell in health and beauty, especially read those policies. Pay attention to what you can and can't sell. Trust me when I tell you, you will get dinged and, they, and 
and you and you won't win, man. You you won't win. I tried. I done been back and forth with them over many many of things. If you just seen my video that I put up about the um, the counterfeit claim I got, this came from eBay. This policy ain't even on there. They they actually hit me with a um what was it? Oh, they took down a uh, a tooth whitening pen I had. Okay, and it's got me. <laughs> They took down this tooth whitening pen, and, and, and the email said that eBay can regulate the amount of hydrogen peroxide that's in the item, and that they reserve the right basically to take it down. So there was nothing in this email that, that told me what amount of hydrogen peroxide in the item is acceptable. There's nothing in the email that even said they, they would take it down. It just said they could take it down, and they regulate those amounts. So I go back and forth with reps, multiple, multiple reps. Nobody can tell me what that amount of hydrogen peroxide was. Remind, mind you now, this is a tooth whitening pen for cleaning your teeth, okay? Which, listen, if you got any tooth whitening items up or anything like that, I, I suggest you go check and make sure it doesn't have hydrogen peroxide in it. And if it does, what they said you have to do is you have to put that in the description. But the problem is they don't tell you how much it can have. So I don't know. I probably would just take it down because they might eventually give you a hit on that. But anyway, now this this policy that they gave me a strike on, right? This is not on their um, policy page. It's not on their OTC page. And I kept telling the to wrap this, I said, okay, I understand the policy and if, if it's a violation, but how am I supposed to know something that you don't even have on your policy page? Right? Again, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to a wall for real. So, you know, but you wouldn't know these things and you wouldn't know about these issues, really, if you jumping back and forth. Now, I, I've been in health and beauty for a while now, so I, it's a lot that I know that a lot of other people don't know. And there's a lot that I know that will keep an account safer than if you just was dabbling here and there and dipping in and out of the category. Because those things start to add up, man. You get a strike here for this, you get a strike here for that. Next thing you know, you suspend it, you suspend it. And, and for what? Knowledge is power, okay? Knowledge is power. So just to recap, the three reasons that I think you shouldn't have an everything store is one, it's inefficient, two, it's harder to scale, and three, Vero issues. The more you branch out and, and dip into different categories, the more you expose yourself to the liability of, of receiving a Vero strike and or violating the eBay policy that you didn't even know existed. Become intimately knowledgeable about your category and your niche. Get to know the rules and get to know the policies. Get to know the companies, the companies that do Vero's, the companies that you know want you to list that will allow you to list their items, but want you to list it a certain way, do that first. And then once you can master that, once you get comfortable with that and you get some traction, then maybe you can start branching out into other areas. Okay. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Do you, do you have an everything store? If you do, are you okay with that? Are you going to move away from that? Do you, what do you think about that? Drop it down below. Hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Every Wednesday and Sunday, I'll be dropping a video. So make sure you hit that notification bell so that you can be notified as soon as I drop those videos.